Come on, Nicole. <laughs> Lead the way. I'm going to see this driver, see if I'm going to hit seven iron or drive. <laughs> Can I play off the seniors? Wow. Did you just say good luck following that? No. I think that's Maybe. what I heard. Maybe. Wow. Well, I don't care if it doesn't go straight. It's going to go long. <laughs> I think golf is in a, in a situation where it constantly craves different things than, than your regular just 72 year old tournaments. You, you, you're looking for different things and obviously here you've got two very good golf courses at the same venue where it gives the opportunity to show the two sides of the games were close to close uh, in close proximity and I think golf needs more events that are just different than where the event becomes different than the, than the regular event and this is certainly one of those and I think that's uh, it, if you we talk about I love the word you, that's used all the time at the moment is grow the game you know this grows the game this is a different kind of this is a different kind of people watching the game in a different way, be the ability to come in and see the two sides of the game. And I think that's, I think that's a huge difference. Uh, women's golf is, is on, a, on a real high at the moment. It's flying, it's got huge talent at the top of the game. We are very lucky that we have at the moment, there's basically three women golfers that are hugely successful and, and has all the ability to play with the best in the world. I mean, that's down to a lot of things that's happened in Danish golf over the last 15 years, but yeah, we certainly have quality players for a small country at the, at the top of the game. I mean, I just walked past John Daly and then Monty was quite chatty on the range just now. Um, but yeah, I think it's just cool that, I mean, just to be around these legends really, um, the whole atmosphere and the whole like sharing the player dining and stuff it's just different and yeah makes this event really nice so not that short no uh, it's not nine though is it could be a nine Ooh. pitching so you, i was gonna say nine pitching. i was gonna say nine and considering yeah. i'm 40 yards ahead of you off i the mean tee. <laughs> you know nine We've got 148 yards. Come on, Nicole. Yeah. I hope it lands on a down slope. On the green. Dance floor and music and all of that. You know, when I watch women's golf, and obviously women's golf over the last few years have come become a lot more powerful and start leaning up towards the men's game. But I think one of the things that when you go through women golfers, the one thing that they do so well is that they use they're so good at using the golf club to actually put power into the ball. And I think that's that's something that amateurs can learn a lot from it's not always about trying to hit it hard it's about having the ability to actually put power into the head of the club to apply that to the ball and if you if you stand and watch women golfers that's what they do they do that better than the men i think that they have that ability um, so 
they have a they have a, a great way of swinging the golf club and, and get the best out of of the golf club to actually send it on its way. Yes, Ken. One ten, the flag top left and right with a little bit of help. Cook opened it up here nicely. Yeah? Yes. Good enough, Nicole, yeah. good enough. From the LAT side, I think over the last couple of years, the, I mean, the top players are still, I mean, getting better as well, but I think the depth of like the good players are getting wider. Um, like you have to play good golf to finish top 10 on the LAT now, where a couple, like five, seven years ago, I think, the strong one was strong, but like the depth was not really there. Um, so I think yeah, the LET has gotten over the last couple of years really, really strong. Um, we got a lot of good players, um, some Solheim Cup players as well, um, which means that you don't have to necessarily play on the LPGA to to get onto the Solheim team. Um, so I think that's really, really good, good thing. But I think for ours. For the, on the men's side, I think one of the things that over the last has changed a little bit over the last few years, where is that we have a three or four guys at the top that that drives our game very hard. They are extremely good uh, and arguably amongst the four or five best players in the world, and and they drive our game in a direction where. All the players that come along, you know, they they see how hard they have to work to keep up with those three, and, and I think that that kind of drags everybody along. Uh, that was certainly the, my my takeaway from Rome was that I, as as you had 12 players that all performed very well, those three at the top that were exceptional, um, and if I was 20 or 25 and I look at those three, I know how hard I would work. And I would have to work to keep up with them, and I think that's uh, that's certainly something that shines through at the moment. That we we have some some of the players that we have are, are so skillful, and uh, we're very fortunate to have them in in the game at the moment for for European golf. enough of these in our time so Ooh. see that's the difference what's the uh, still do that <laughs> can't do this it's a bit forward, though. 